this is not something that you put on the other person. This is not where you get to do a bunch of stuff that throws your partner off of their emotional center. And then you say, well, that's their problem for being thrown off on their emotional center. Is to have empathy for your partner. You're trying to understand how women are in general, and then you deduce it down to your individual woman you're dealing with. Okay. And women would do themselves a huge favor if they did the same thing. If you understand like why dudes are the way they are or why women are the way they are in general, when it comes to mating, you're going to have a much clearer picture for why your girlfriend or wife or whoever does the things that she does. And so we start there, but don't end there though, either general concepts of evolutionary psychology, you know, can, can leave you with a nihilistic viewpoint of the mating marketplace. And that's not going to be productive for you because each person has individual motivations based on their own background, their own personal um, genetic makeup and psychological triggers, both unconscious and, and ones that they're aware of. So, so that's what makes people unique and you need to consider that. And you're looking to have empathy for your partner, which means an understanding of their perspective um, and in order to have an understanding for someone else's perspective, you got to bag your ego and bag your own emotional junk that you have going on in your mind in order to be open and understanding of someone else in a radically accepting way. In other words, you're using radical acceptance. OK, you are not looking to judge them for their behavior or for their mindset or thoughts, you know, at least not right right away not that you would ju judge it's not about judging them but i mean you will you will judge their behavior and you will make assessment whether something is good or bad and all those things but you need to be able to listen first and understand their motivations without inserting your moral judgments or your personal uh insecurities or concerns um or anxieties into what she's saying all right so that's what takes that emotional self-control for both men and women. And um, that's a really hard thing to do, right? But it's something that is doable. And that's where you have to work on yourselves a little bit every day. Timing is everything. All right. A lot of times, and I've been this way before, something happens where you perceive, you know, that this is something that's a conflict. It's something that is a boundary cross or a condition cross, or maybe the threat of a boundary cross or a condition, you know, um, not meeting up a, a condition, right? Maybe she says something that really confuses you and makes you think, gosh, if that's, is that how she, what were her morals and her values are? Like, is that how she thinks about, you know, casual sex or is that how she thinks about commitment or whatever, like, you know, th is this person going to be good for me? And I'm, you know, emotionally invested. And now they're saying these things that make me question her mindset and her ability to be in this relationship, right? Like this is all things that might go on in your head and you want to bring something up that may then lead to conflict, right? All right. So if that's the case, you right, you need to consider a few things. One, you need to consider the timing of it. All right. And this is a big thing people don't think about. And timing is everything. So when dealing with the conflict, timing is so important. And a lot of people just have bad timing when they decide to bring an issue up. And it creates a massive conflict that didn't even need to be a conflict to begin with. So something happens, what we could call a friction point. Right. And that friction happens. And then let's say you're like thinking, well, I have to bring this up right away, right now. And where does that come from? Right. That comes from, again, a lack of emotional self-control and calibration because your emotions are a certain way now because of something she said or did. And so you need to bring it up. You feel like you need to bring it up right away because you want to calm your own emotions down. Right. And that's what ends up happening. And that's not the right answer because let's say, for example, you know, your 
in a public situation and she does something that's small and your, you know, your inclination, it, 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 it throws your emotional balance off, right? Your inclination might be to make a scene in public, let's say. Now, sometimes because it's a boundary cross, you may have to do that. And that's not on, you know, that's not a fault of yours. That's something that has to be done. But a lot of times it's not the case and you end up exaggerating a conflict by looking like you're overreacting or looking like you're just, you know, being embarrassing or whatever. And then instead of the focus being on that other person's behavior that was out of bounds, the focus becomes on how you handled it now because you didn't, you know, time this properly. Right. And why didn't you time it properly? Because you lacked emotional self-control and awareness. Right. And so this is why that mindset stuff is so important. Right. Your inner game will dictate how successful you are in your outer game. You want preventative. You want to pick a time where the moods are good. So let's say there's a, a problem or a friction point. So you have three things you want in terms of timing. You want to look at, is this something preventative? So we're going to prevent something off in the future. Is this something I need to address immediately? Right now, the second, because boundary was crossed or there's a threat or there's like some major thing going on where I need to right now, immediately, you know, address this problem. Or is this something that happened already? It's not preventative, but I don't need to address it right this second so I can be well-timed and when and how I address it. So those are the three things, preventative, immediate, and well-timed. So preventative, all right, there's certain things which are not necessarily conflicts at the moment. There's not a current fight going on. But you need to do something or say something so that you prevent a future conflict. Now, both you and your partner are responsible for doing this. This is not something that you put on the other person. This is not where you get to do a bunch of stuff that throws your partner off of their emotional center and then you say, well, that's their problem for being thrown off on their emotional center. And so in other words, it's when you're with somebody, whether it's casual or more than that, even you guys need to be giving a crap about each other's emotions. If you don't, then you probably don't need to be together. Right. So you need to care and have empathy and sympathy as well. All right. Sympathy is where you care about the emotions and you identify with them a bit versus empathy is just trying to understand them from their perspective. OK, you need to have both for the other person to a degree. Now, you're not responsible for your partner's emotions. OK, only the individual can be responsible for their own emotions. However, you are responsible for your own behavior and what you do in that relationship that could affect those emotions. And you want to be a compliment to your partner in having a good, positive emotional state, not a detriment to your partner. So that's where the responsibility is on you. You're not responsible for her uh, or his emotions, but you are responsible for being a compliment to he or she having a positive emotional state, right, versus being a detriment to that. Or at worst, pushing her into a negative emotional state. And this is why the preventative stuff is so important. And if you want to maintain frame as a man, this is really important too. So a simple thing might be preventative saying like, you know, let's say you guys have plans and it's a hard time, but you got to run like an errand or two before that. And you know that if you just like leave or don't come home from work right away, and start running errands without any communication, she is going to get emotionally off-centered, wondering if you're going to be on time for whatever event you have to go to, okay? So a simple, hey, after work, I got to run here and there and pick up a couple things, but I'll be home on time and we'll be ready by six. Sending a simple communication that says, hey, you know, 
I'm doing this to let you know. So don't worry. That goes a really long way. Another example is dealing with boundaries. Let's say, you know, an ex boyfriend or girlfriend runs into you and they try to strike up a conversation. They run into you in public somewhere or whatever. And let's say it's a local bar, tavern, restaurant where you guys know mutual people, right? Um, a preventative thing would be to say right away, hey, I ran into so-and-so X and this is what happened and, and freely talk about it. Not doing that might mean the other partner might find out, right? That this interaction happened and then they're going to feel like you were hiding something from them. Now, you weren't doing anything wrong by not mentioning it necessarily. You may not have been hiding something from them. In fact, maybe you were trying to avoid creating distress in your partner by not mentioning it. Or really, usually though, it's not even about that because most people are selfish. You're just avoiding creating distress in yourself by having to mention that and having them feel distressed. And then, you know, you have to now deal with that, right? So you don't mention it, but then what happens? She or he finds out. Now they're wondering if you hid this from them. You see, you see what I mean? And so you have to be proactive and it's, it's a difficult thing, especially if you, if you're a busy person, you're, you're on your own mental point of origin and this and that, but you have to have consideration for your partner and you have to see these pain points for your partner ahead of time. And it is up to you in order to take preventative measures to mitigate conflicts, saying certain key things. You know, it could be any, any like little thing, like, right. Let's say if you're late and forgetful, do you know what I mean? Saying ahead of time, like I said, I know we got that thing tonight and here's what I'm doing. I'll be home by this time. Doing that, for example, would mitigate her stress level. And so then it's not like, you know, an hour before some event you're now getting, so are you, did you, you coming or what are you right? You're getting an attitude and getting this negative right now. It's up to her or, you know, him, if it's him, the case, but it's up to, you know, the person that's distressed to try to deal with their own emotions, but you as her partner need to help her with that. Okay. You're and as a man, you're the leader in the relationship. So you need to lead the emotions in the proper place. Now, this doesn't mean that by missing a preventative measure, you're inconsiderate, you're a piece of crap, and you're making mistakes. And that she gets to sit there and say, blame you for her emotional state. That's not okay. And so see, this is where both partners here, and this is why I'm speaking to men and women here, because both people have to do their part in the interaction, right, in order to have a healthy conflict mitigation and management. You are not going to remember to do the preventative thing all the time. You want to put the effort in to do to to do the preventative thing and it will help you in the long run. OK, but you're not always going to be perfect. And it's really important that the other person is not punishing you. OK, for uh, for for not being preventative, especially if nothing actually happened in terms of a condition uh, not being met or a boundary crossed. Right. To argue or to be emotionally uh, distressed and then take it out on your partner when no actual offense happened. You're just mad because they didn't, you know, do something preventative or whatever, communicate better. You're now the person creating conflict. And so each person has to be aware and not wanting to create problems where there aren't problems, but, but the preventative thing is going to prevent a lot of problems for you because remember the golden ratio. So if you're having consistent places where she is in emotional distress and thinking bad things about you because you're not doing the preventative measures, what are you doing? You're tallying up these negative interactions, which takes a series of positive uh, interactions to then counteract it. And it's just like, you know, filling up a bathtub full of water and the drain not draining it fast enough. And eventually that bathtub overflows and the relationship blows up and she breaks up with you. You know, you end up breaking up with her or whatever. And so that's something you, you don't want to have happen because of an accumulation of negative events. Uh